Kari Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich painted this landscape from a reference photo kindly provided by Kristen Warner. If you want to create a loose landscape, you need not follow the reference photo exactly. It's simply a reference and you can add your own touch to it. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have cobalt blue, sepia, a gray mix of cobalt blue and sepia, raw umber from Windsor and Newton, quinacridone gold, a green mix of cobalt blue and quin gold, and imidazolone brown. He also used permanent white gouache from Windsor and Newton for the highlights. Color alternatives are listed below. The ash paper is on a block. You can use masking tape to create a neat border. The block is placed on a wedge with an angle of about 45 degrees to help the paint flow. Sometimes it helps to draw a rough sketch before you start painting as it helps you to balance your composition and to eliminate unnecessary elements that might clutter your painting or distract from the focus point. Wet the entire paper, but be careful to leave the buildings dry at the moment. To create the overcast sky, start with a cobalt and sepia premix. Add the paint to the wet surface and allow it to blend with the water on the paper. Remember that watercolor becomes a lot lighter when it dries, so don't be afraid to add enough pigment to your paper. Blend some of the cobalt into the sky area to create variation. The angle of the paper will help the paint flow to create a soft overcast sky. It is quite alright to paint over the trees and other elements on the paper as the sky color will serve as a background wash. It should not have any adverse effects on the trees later as you will paint these trees much darker. But leave the buildings unpainted for now. Add light washes of raw umber and the greens to the foreground to cover the white of the paper. This is the first wash so allow the colors to blend gently on the wet paper. While the paper is still wet, add a greyish tree line in the middle ground. The paint will spread into the sky and into the foreground area. This will dry into soft edges which will help to create distance and will form a nice contrast to the stark lines of the buildings. 
It is important that you wet the paper thoroughly. As you can see here, the paper has dried very quickly, so there isn't the same wispy effect with the tree line on the right as on the left. Do not attempt to add water now though. This will cause blooms and ruin the painting. You can now start to add more color to the foreground, but make sure that your brush isn't too wet. The pigment you use should also be a bit thicker or drier than your initial wash. Use directional brush strokes. These will help to lay the paint in such a way that it will lead the viewer's eye into the painting. Add a few dabs of brown and blue to the middle ground to add variation in the wash. Lightly add a next layer of raw umber to the ploughed field once it has dried a bit. Now allow the painting to dry. Use the dark grey premix made from cobalt and sepia to paint the roofs and windows of the buildings. This is done wet on dry. The first washes created the foundation of the painting. Now you can start to add detail and texture. Create an outline for the path and add darker colors in the foreground. The more subdued, lighter colors in the background will help to create depth. You can see that the hairs of the squirrel brush is a bit bent, like a foot. This means that the brush does not have a lot of moisture in it. This is ideal for dry brushing, which will help you to create texture. If a natural hair brush is straight and puffed out with a sharp tip, it has a lot of water. Keep an eye out for this if your painting is still wet as this means that you might cause blooms if you start painting again on a wet or damp surface. Dab the brush on a paper towel if you think it's too wet. This brush still has a lot of painting in it, but the angle of the hair shows that it's a bit drier, so you can now safely do your scumbling or dry brushing to create the desired texture. Here you can see that Heinrich dipped the brush in water and then into the paint again. Pay attention to the tip of the brush. 
It doesn't have the foot anymore. It is straight and has a sharp point. When you paint now, the paint is watery and blends easily. Use the same techniques to add texture to the foreground to the right of the path. Add some paint and then use a watery brush to blend the paint. Work lightly though. Some pigments lift very easily, so be careful to use a light touch. Continue to add dabs of pigment and then spread the paint with clear water. Add a bit of blue for cooler colors to create distance or add some quin gold to create warmer greens to bring the grassland a bit forward. Use the layering in different tones and different colors to build the foreground. Pay attention to the direction of the brush strokes. Your strokes will also help to establish the lay of the land. In some areas, you can leave the paint to spread and create soft edges where it blends. In other areas, you can guide it so that it forms hard lines. Elements with hard lines will stand out and come a bit forward. Add a bit of splatter for more texture and interest. Shield the areas you want to keep free of splatters with your hand or with a paper towel, especially the sky and in this case the buildings. Dip your brush in a pool of paint, hold it parallel to the paper and tap it lightly with your finger or with another brush. Splatters can be quite unpredictable, so practice on a piece of clean paper if you are unfamiliar with the technique. You can diffuse some of the splatters to blend into the background or leave them to dry so that it gives some texture to the terrain. Allow the painting to dry again. Make a watery mix of cobalt and sepia for the buildings. If you leave them as they are, they will look unnatural. The white of the paper would be too stark. So knock back the starkness a bit by using the watery cobalt mix. This color will also serve as a shadow for the building. Add a bush and some other details to the house and then use Emmy Brown for the barn.
You can vary between sepia and the cobalt and sepia mix for the trees in the front of the house. Trees should never be just one color. Make it interesting by varying between the colors on your palette. The trees have lighter and darker branches to give them more dimension. Use the same dry brushing technique to create the illusion of small twigs at the end of the branches. Add some more detail and shadows to the buildings and the foreground. Always make sure that you ground your trees by giving them a base shadow so they don't look like they are floating in the air. Lightly add a few more layers to enhance the color here and there and to emphasize the terrain. Make ample use of the dry brushing technique to create shadows and variation in the foreground.
Let the painting dry again. Add some shadows to the buildings to enhance the shapes. To add a few highlights, you can use white gouache. The gouache can also be mixed with some of the paint on the palette to lighten up areas with a similar color. The gouache makes the pigment opaque. This is ideal for the last few finishing touches. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Vaya con Dios.